Hello, in today's video we're going to see how to acquire or how to pull the module code of a CPX module uh, via Modbus TCP. And what I have today here is I have a CPX unit or a CPX terminal from Festo and I have this FD36 module, which is, it's an Ethernet IP module, but it can also do Modbus TCP. And then I have just another module, which in this case, I have a two analog output module, okay? So only two modules, you know, these CPX can have up to 10 modules on the same terminal, but for now we just have the two. Now, what I want to do, or actually what in this case, in this application, what we need to do is customer needs to be able to pull the number of these modules. So they need to know which module is connected because there are a variety of modules. So for example, this could be a 16 digital input module or a combination of a digital input and a digital output. Uh, so the customer needs to know which module is connected. Now, each module has a specific module code or module number. And I'm gonna show you that right here. So for example, this one that I have connected right now, so to analog output module, it's a code number 129, module code 129. Now, if I was to show you another module that I have right here as well, so this is a four digital output module. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it there on the camera, but this is a four digital output module and in this case, this says that the module code is a three. So we're gonna do both, so you can see the difference between the two, but um, I just wanted to explain what this exercise was about. Okay, so we're gonna need a couple of documents, and I just took some screenshots and put them on these, uh, you know, on these PowerPoint so you can see what I'm gonna be doing. The first thing that we need to do is, of course, you need to set up your um, FV36 module to uh, Modbus. That's the first thing. I actually, I don't have that documented here, but I'll show it to you real quick. So if we go to the user manual of the CPX FE36, you're gonna find it under the deal switch configuration right here. So right here, deal switch 1.2, and that one is this one over here. So this one, if you switch this one on, it would be in Modbus TCP. So. That's what, what we're going to do today. So this one, if it's on, it's Modbus TCP. If this one is off, it's Ethernet IP, okay? So I already have that set up. Now, the next thing that it says here is we need to turn on this IO diagnostic interface, okay? This is pretty cool because it gives you two additional bytes of data that you can use to pull information out of the CPX. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. We're going to pull the module code out of the CPX. So how do we enable, how do we enable this IO diagnostic interface or diagnostics interface? We also need to turn on one of the, these dual switches. And in this case, it's dual switch the, what, two. And let's take a look at the user manual here. So same user manual. Uh, we scroll down and then you can see it right here. Uh, deal switch two, if I show you here, so this one on the right, if I switch on the one on the left, that means that I will enable the IO diagnostics interface, okay? And that's exactly what I did today. All right, so what else do we need to do? Um, once you enable this IO diagnostics interface, there is a structure. So as I mentioned, you get two bytes to be able to pull data. It's actually read and write, So, but today we're only gonna be doing read. Uh, within these two bytes, so you can see I have the uh, 16 bits here, and from bit zero to bit 12, this is a CPX function number. We're gonna get that uh, to that in a second. Um, actually, let me back up. Uh, the table on the left, this is write access. The table on the right, this is read access, okay? So let me explain write access. As I mentioned, bit 0 to 12, this is the CPX function number. Bit 13, this is where we specify if we're going to be doing a read or a write request. And then bit 14 is the data that we're requ requesting. So today we're going to be using word value. So we're gonna set this bit 14 to one. And then bit 15, it's basically an execute. 
So execute the, uh, the request that I'm setting, right? Then once you do this on the right axis, um, on the outputs, uh, you're gonna get a response on the inputs. And this is specified here on this table on the right hand side, read axis. So you have the full 16 bits and then it tells you here that if you get a 8,000 hex, that was a successful request. And, um, and that's basically it. You're gonna get the result right there on the, I think it's on the second byte. Uh, yeah, on the second byte. So that, that is the structure. It'll make sense one, once I start doing it. I just wanted to explain where all of this is coming from. Now, you did, you did see here this table that it says CPX function number. What is this CPX function number? So on the user manual, let me open that up again. There is this user manual right here. Let me go back to the first page. So it's uh, this one, system manual, and it's uh, 234 pages. So let's go to page 196. There are a bunch of different functions that you can have on the CPX. So you can see function number one, two, et cetera, et cetera, right? The one that we're gonna be using is this one, function, function number for the module data, okay? Now, what we want is the module code. And the module code, we get it by using this function number. And this is basically 16 plus 16 multiplied by the module position plus zero. Okay, or module number, sorry, module number. So that is, in my case, I wanna read the second module, but the position of this module is position one. Uh, now, what is this software? This is a very useful software that's called CPX Festo Maintenance Tool. Um, but I'm not gonna be using this, this one too much. I just wanna show it to visualize some things like this. This is module one, this is the one that I want. Now, if we go back to the, this table, it says here that, for instance, in, if I wanna read the module code of module one, that would be 16 plus 16 times one plus zero. So that's 16 times one, that's 16 plus 16, that's 32. Okay, so the function number to read the module code of co uh, module number one is function code or function number 32, all right? Um, okay, let me go back to my sheet sheet here. And then that's basically it. Now, where I've been, I've been talking about back here about reading and writing, right? Write access and read access. Where do I do this in Modbus? So when you're working on Modbus uh, or with Modbus on the CPX, you're reading and writing registers to the process data, right? On outputs or inputs. So whenever you want to, for example, fire a coil, you will do that on these addresses here. So from 40,001 to 40,256. Now, if I wanted to read the status, of, the status of a sensor, that's process data for the inputs, the, the addresses for that is or are 45,392 to 45,647, okay? Again, don't get uh, confused about this at this point. It'll make a lot of sense once I do it here, once I show you. All right, so let's do this. I'm ready now to uh, read and write, and I'm gonna use this Modbus TCP client. Uh, this is a Festo package um, that I got from somewhere within Festo, but there are a lot of other Modbus TCP um, clients out there that you can install on Windows, or even better, it, it, I'm pretty sure that if you're working on a similar application, maybe you have a PLC that can be a Modbus master, so you will do this directly over your PC, uh, PLC. Sorry. Today I'm gonna be doing it over PC. So the IP address of my CPX FV36 module, so this one, I know that this one is 192.168.4.25. If you don't know your IP address, you could also, um, there are two ways, and I'm gonna, not gonna go into the details about that, but you can set that IP address using the deal switches uh, on the FV36 module. Uh, this one's over here, number three. You can do that by following this, or you could 
use this piece of software that's called Festo Field Device Tool, and you can scan here and assign a static IP address and whatnot. Anyways, today's video is not about that. Um, uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect. So once I connect here, I'm going to, because I was doing this earlier, I already have the addresses here, but remember that these addresses come from this table. So I'm going to be writing to the very first word, which, which is located in the Modbus address 40,001. Okay, so let's go back there. 40,001. Now, this is the important part. What am I going to be writing? Right? Now, remember that I want to read the module code. So let's go back here. So it says here, module code, I want to read module number one. So that's 16 times one plus 16, that's a 32. So my, my module code, the, sorry, the function number, it's going to be 32. All right, so let me pull up a calculator and set it up in programmer mode so you can see. Let's go to binary, uh, no, no, not binary like that, like this. So I want to do a 32 and then what else? Remember that we said that we want to do a read request. So it's going to be, let me see here. It's going to be a read request. So we leave this in zero, but we're going to be reading a word, right? So we set this to one. Now, once we toggle, once we toggle bit 15, it's going to read, it's going to send this request. Okay, so now if I set this bit here, this bit 15, this is equal to a number 49,184. So 49,184. Let me go back to here. 49,184. That's what I'm going to write. So I'm going to write this now. And then I'm going to go back to the read. And here, I'm going to read the response, read the response on where? I'm going to read the response on here, um, on the read registers. Process data inputs, 45,392, okay? So 45,392, that's the address. So now I'm going to read. Look at, look at this. All of these are in zero. Read. And now I get a response. So the first address, 45,392, it's telling me 8,000 in hex. What does 8,000 in hex mean? It means, let's go back to this table right here. Equal equals 8,000 in hex, request successful. And on the other Modbus address, on, this, on the next Modbus address, I'm going to get the response, OK? So let's take a look. The next Modbus address, it's telling me 81 hex, which in decimal, it's a 129. Okay, so 129, what is this? If we go back to the user manual for the um, analog module, it says module code 129, this is equivalent to a two analog output module. All right, in which I, I don't remember if I mentioned which mo manual this was. This is manual electronics, CPX, analog IO modules. Okay. So that's how you get the module code. Okay, 129. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch the hardware. So I'm going to disconnect and I'm going to switch the hardware, so I'm going to power off the CPX. I'm going to pause the video here for a second. I'm going to disconnect the, the CPX from the power supply, and I'm going to change this module from a two analog output module to a four digital output module. There's a lot of brightness here in this room, but four digital output module. I'm going to do that now. All right, we're back, and as you can see, it's telling me that I'm logged out of the CPX, and that's because I removed power to it. Uh, I already applied power back on after I re removed the other module and put in the, uh, the the other one that I showed you, the four digital output module. So I'm now going to retry the connection. 
And now you're going to see that it says 4DO. So this module is a 4DO. Now, here's a little trick. If you double click on this module, and now you, uh, these are the parameters and some other information that you can get within Festo uh, CPX maintenance tool. If I click on module, you're going to see some information here. And now if we look at the code, the first line actually, it says code number three. So this is the same code that we're going to be able to get through Modbus, right? So where is this code here? If I show you the other user manual for the for the CPX4 digital output module right here, it says module code three. So as you can see, using this, this uh, Festo maintenance tool, you can get the code. But the whole purpose of what we're doing today is to get it programmatically. Because picture this, you have, I don't know, on your, on your PLC program, you have some sort of check, right? That you say the first module has to be a four digital output, the second module has to be a 16 digital input and whatnot, right? So you could do this programmatically. Uh, anyways, code number three. So now we know which number we're expecting to see via Modbus. So let's reestablish communication on Modbus, uh, connect. And then we're gonna see, uh, we're gonna read again, right? So everything is, is back to zero because we haven't sent a request. And we're gonna, actually we're gonna set, send the same request because it's, it's in the same position, position number one, right? So write and now read. And now we see a number three on the second Modbus address. And this is telling me this is this was a success with this 8,000 hex. And with this three decimal on the second Modbus address is basically telling me the module code for this module on position one is module code number three. So that is how you can get module codes program programmatically via Modbus TCP. Um, in case that you were wondering, the the user manuals that I showed today, all of this information that I showed today, you can find it on the user manuals. I just tried to compile everything to explain it easily, but uh, you can get these from the FESTA websites. So, uh, FESTA website. So the first one is a system manual for the CPX. The second one where I got the codes from is for from the user manual for the electronics, IO modules and connection blocks. And then for the analog one, uh, CPX analog IO modules. So with these three, well, actually the CPX FV36 user manual as well, this one is the one where I showed all of the deal switches and all of that. Uh, anyways, I hope that you like this video and that you can, um, that you find it useful for a future application. Thank you for watching. Bye.